Okay, I just wanted to go over the persistence build. For season, I decided to do persistence elemental minion since I don't play elemental too much anyway. And uh, never did persistence, so... We did persistence with the awakening for the maximized double damage. And I got the increased maximized damage chance. And got the uh, extra chance to do double maximized damage on hit for that too. So, just tried to maximize as much as we could. Uh, without the ability for charms or too much of anything else to roll maximized damage for minions. Uh, kind of hard to maximize on the, the chance, so... Just gonna switch over to crit most likely here, just to get a little bit more damage in, but this is able to do pretty much every everything in the game for seasonal. So let's go over that real quick. What we got going on here is uh, poison arrow abysslings, and I also will show you guys the uh, fire orb abysslings too. Smash is what everything's kind of built around here, so we didn't want to crit. A huge uh, damage amplification stacks for this. And the persistence works perfect with that since it disables the crit. You don't have to do that. If you're going to use smash, you want to switch something else out. We do have seal of persistence going. And that does disable the crit anyway. So that can work with smash too. You can switch this out. But this is pretty powerful. So it's hard to switch this. And for anybody interested, uh, does pretty good damage. We'll go over what, what we've done so far. So right here, you got about almost 70 million DPS. That single target on a 140, uh, Unstable Serpents. As for our defenses, we're pretty much maxed out in most things. Our armor's a little bit low right now, but that's just because we're switching around gear while I was showing off the video stuff. So get pretty good uh, resistances, about 12,000 hit points, 14,000 hit points when I'm in full gear and uh, able to do almost all the content in the game. Here's the skill tree. Uh, what I found best until they fix some of the charms and whatnot is you're gonna have to go increase and maximize damage chance. It's the only way to really pop off the numbers often. And other than that, it's a normal minion setup. So I always recommend Presence Verity. Minion damage. Multi-shot. This goes for pretty much all, all minion builds here. Another thing that works with almost all the minions is uh, Mana Storm. The only time you're going to veer away from things like this or things like Unity is going to be when um, you're going to do a specific minion build. So in my case, I'm switching between melee minions, uh, physical javelins, and I'm switching between the elemental ones. So this is more of a generic setup. If you're only doing something like the poison minions, you might have something like uh, what I was doing for maximum damage. It depends on your setup, of course. But you'll have to do something like uh, poison penetration. And I did get that here. This ends up doing a little bit more damage, especially on the higher end bosses. And when you get it legendary, go straight through their resist. You'll, you'll see big damage numbers when you switch to something like that. So that's what I mean by specialization. Same thing with the Fire Orb Abysslings. Uh, when you do a Fire Orb Abyssling setup, it's almost the same setup here, especially for Persistence. But if you're going crit with them, you get a little bit more leniency or leeway on what you can use. And... Even if you're not going to crit with them, it's a lot better to use concentrated area damage since they can use it. And you can also use area of effect with them too. Both of these are pretty effective for the Fire Orb Abysslings. All of the Abysslings, including Fire Orb, benefit highly from using Chain. So you're going to need to get Chain eventually if you're going to use Abysslings and that, that goes for pretty much any of them. It even works pretty well with the Poison Arrow Abysslings, even though they chain already. Just gives them more chaining capabilities. So here's an easy setup for everybody. If you just want to be a basic summoner, without having any other abilities that you have to rely on, you just want to use your summons. So I recommend Tenacious Regeneration and Shout of Justice, if you can get them. 
This helps a lot with just being able to channel and not have to worry about anything, especially if you're going to channel through abilities and you know you can take it. Shadow of Justice makes sure so you just keep on channeling. Now, easy setup for Sacred Devotion is adding channel enhancement, spell activation while channeling, and then add whatever spell you want here. A good one to add here if you don't want to add something like Plague Spike is Mark of Focus, especially if you've awakened it and got it down to the 100% skill rune cooldown recovery, and you're also using a cooldown recovery helmet. If you're not doing something like that, Gather Minions works very well. I use Gather Minions Verity because the longer you can keep the minions up, the longer I can channel. Don't have to worry about anything, so try to awaken for that. You get this amplification. They still are going to die on really powerful maps, but this is going to help with them a lot. So something I tried out on this was the gain regeneration while channeling. Origin. Uh, the regeneration effect's kind of nice. And I'll show you how it works real quick. One thing about it, if people are wondering, is you don't even have to keep on channeling to get the regeneration effect. If I channel for a second, you'll see that you get the effect for three seconds. So even just a quick channel. Well, you can just walk around, you'll have that regeneration effect up pretty much permanently. If you just keep channeling, it doesn't really affect it. Just keeps on resetting it over and over again. Kind of good to know that. One other thing about it is it's just a regeneration effect. Um, I'm using it because I was trying to push certain things in Spire and whatnot. And now that I've obtained those, we won't be worrying about that anymore. And I might switch it back to one of the other Awakenings, maybe the damage reduction one. My standard character already has the plus two max stages, and that's the one I, I would recommend to people. Anyway, to go with our Persistence build, we had to Awaken Seal of Persistence Origin. Uh, I have a hard time recommending this to anybody because it really only increases the double maximized damage critical or d double maximized damage chance. Uh, probably the only funny thing about this is that when you do awaken it, anybody that you stand next to that is a crit build, it just disables their crit, uh, verified by multiple people for me. And uh, I've also noticed that when I had my minions critting, if I just go stand by them, they'll stop being able to crit, so. Uh, interesting fact about that, but other than that, I, I don't find it to be the best of uh, auras to awaken for your minions. Might want to go with uh, Seal of Striking still and whatnot. Next thing is, is because we were doing Persistence, Unite Crowd became a lot less important, so I stopped focusing on this as much, mainly because of the crit rate. Crit rate is extremely important for a minion build, but because we didn't need it, and you only get a attack and cast speed from this, I didn't focus on it as much. Now that I'm switching back over to crit, probably going to use this a lot more and focus on it again. And we already went over what we did for Awakening on both of these, so Mark of Focus Origin, Mark of Focus, or Gather Minions Verity, those are what I recommend. And then for our minions here, because I'm using a staff that doesn't have attack speed, I went with the cast speed here. Or, or, or cast speed with the cast speed. So, if um, if you have a normal staff and your max cast speed, you may not want to go with this. You may want to go with one of the other awakenings, especially the ven venom rate one, but or the HP amplification. But based off my build, this is the one we wanted here. So there you go. That's how the poison arrows are going to be. Uh, a setup for the other abyss links here i'll show you this is pretty much what i was doing with these guys throw on chain and then when you're using the fire orb abyss links, you get this huge aoe effect uh quite powerful and it's pretty fun to map with so i can recommend these guys highly it's just that you need to synth a few more runes to make them effective especially the chain So that's pretty much the build for these minions. You're going to just, this is the basic setup 
From here, you start unlocking your Troms Crystals. And you can add new abilities that you want to. You can make Whirlwind Minions, which I highly recommend. If you don't want to do Whirlwind Minions, you can add other effects to your uh, Sacred Devotion. You can set up Illusion Hooks, which gives a huge benefit. I've gone over that in a different video. Um, there's all sorts of different things you can set up. So we'll go over all, all the stuff we have, and I'll go over the skill tree real quick. Here's what we set up. Gather minions increase, and I went with the Sacred Devotion equip effect. Here's the Zodiac for you. Let's go over the Zodiac real quick for you. Most of the minion setups are going to be the same. This is just going to be a little bit different because of being persistence. Now, when you're first leveling up, you can skip out on a little bit of the minion penetration and whatnot. I would especially skip out on min the minion uh, elemental penetration because you, you don't need it while you're leveling. There you go. In this case, when you're going through, uh, don't go to cycle. Cycle was more of an experiment. It does work pretty well on really powerful maps when you're running away and your minions all get just annihilated. You get enough mana back to immediately summon them all back. So works out pretty good. It's just you have to play, play style is a little bit different. The reason why we're set up like this instead of using Unite Power, by the way, is because I had to go through Sharpness to get the minion damage amp. And it's because it's the only way to activate this Zodiac Stone Specialization 2 trait. So, if you don't have this, go ahead and spec yourself a little bit different. Recommend getting maybe Unite Power. You can do the Minion Focus effect if you want. You can go into anything. This is the easiest setup right here. Eventually you can change it if you want to go maybe for the Rune Knight taking some effect here, but... This is uh, highest damage, biggest bang for your buck. Once again, trying to activate a Zodiac stone here. So this is a heavy investment in a tree, but it's mainly just to get a stone going. Here's the rest of the minion stuff. Don't have to spec into any crit here, so this is where you're saving a little bit of points. So you can experiment with different different builds with your minions here. A little bit of HP to go with the fact that we're using the uh, HP, the minion presence. HP amplification. Abyssling venom rate. This is something unique to just being poison minions. And the reason why we went into a little bit of poison energy here is because it was the only way to activate this Dominion damage penetration. So without this Zodiac Stone trait, I recommend only going for the maximized damage unless you have something set up or you're using the unique staff to use the, the minion stuff there, which I have tried out and it works pretty well. So if you do get this staff, you start a setup for it, and you can get your minions to get, get the energy pretty quick. It's not too bad. Most of what I've done has been built around using this staff, though. And just keeping my attack and my spell damage up so that my minions can do as max damage possible. And that's the Zodiac Tree for everybody. We've already gone over the skill, and that's pretty much the main things that you're going to have to look at for the build. If you want to know how to gear, it, making a necklace is pretty easy. You'll want to go with something like this, just some minion damage, HP, and then try to get some minion stats that you can reroll for even more damage. Or maybe even go with a cast Thors, or really any enchant that's going to give minions on hit effect. Something that makes them get acceleration, uplift, something like that. 
If you're going to use unique staff like this, you're going to need to stick with something like this. That way you can keep the plat max uh, Bisling count. And you don't have to enchant it on your staff. For your belt, when you don't need resist anymore, go ahead and try to make a HP belt for your minions. This will help you get your minion presence finished. And I recommend doing like a time and space one. That way you can get HP amplification for yourself since you're not going to get a lot of stats for yourself on a belt. Most stats are going to go to your minions. That's the only reason why I'd even get a minion belt is for the HP to the minions and then making your minions even more tanky. Since we're persistence build, rings didn't need crit on them, so we rerolled the, the crit damage. Trying to get something here, but we just got minion attack speed over and over again. Minions regenerate max HP. This is for if we ever did decide we wanted to go to crit. We could bring our crit damage back, and I can reroll this into a massive amount of crit. Here's a plant's ring. Uh, with the plant's ring, we were able to get the minion overpower effect. This helps a lot, especially with the elemental minions and needing to get the penetration. It also helps with doing a lot more damage. And since you're doing a persistence build, something like a plant's ring mixed with the fire ring would be maximum damage. You can get the damage amp up on top, get the minion overpower effect on bottom, and you could reroll minion over a power effect for even more overpower or you can get the damage penetration, which I just stuck with because it rolled pretty well. It's kind of hard to get the tokens to reroll this. So those are some options. The strongest ring you're going to get is going to be cast speed, damage, HP to activate your presence again. And then also if you can merge and get a fire ring with the damage amp instead of the damage, that's going to be the strongest. But it's going to be hard to merge this with your plants ring and actually get the stats you want. So. You can pick one or the other. If you want to do the most damage with persistence, I think the overpower effect in the end is going to be the best. A little bit over even the damage amp. Now, let's move on to the, the rest of the gear. If you go for a helmet, pretty good helmet base, I think, is going to be either the T33 or the T32 version of the Chaos Resist Helm. Getting resist for your summoner is pretty tough. Try to get one of these kind of helms. Simultaneous Abyssling count. This is mainly because the hardest content in the game. If you don't have this, summoning that one extra time for an extra Abyssling is really annoying. So this is going to help with that. Best stats you can get on this if you're wondering. Go for the Simultaneous. HP. Minion HP. Chaos Resist. Fire Resist. And then one more Resist. If you can get the three Resist on your helmet here... And then you can go ahead and get minion HP up here. You're good to go. Now, if you're if you're going to take it a step further, you can merge your helmet and try to get skill cooldown recovery. That that's going to be the best. But just for your first helmet, go ahead and try to make something like this. Reason why I say minion HP is because you can reroll minion HP for crit damage later. And that's going to be more for your crit build. But in the meantime, we're doing persistence, and this is how to do persistence. Light's Portrait's not required. The reason why we're using it is because, once again, I did awaken my ability to give me regeneration. So why not have the better regeneration effect while we're at it? If you want to do maximum damage, definitely stick with making some shoulders. Do not uh, use Light's Portrait. For your chest, really easy chest to make for somebody. You just get a Mirazetti. Wait. The, the water one, and then go ahead and throw it on there. You can make minion skill rune level. And the reason why we use Mirazetti is because you can get minion skill rune level. HP, HP would be the best for me. And then you can get chaos resist, another resist, and right down here, HP recovery upon abyssling death. Huge. Uh, when you get that, you can reroll that into crit damage, or you can roll into raw minion damage. Because we're using a persistence build once again, we went with the raw minion damage. Last big damage you're going to get is from your gloves. Go ahead and go with water gloves. That's going to be the easiest for persistence. That's going to allow you to get your poison resist, or not really these resist in particular, but you can get two resists on it. 
you can get your minion cast speed or attack speed and you can try to roll those double hp rolls or the gear armor again now for maximum damage especially early on early on you may want to go with something like this a clouds and rain gloves is going to give you damage against elites and minion damage and you can roll minion attack speed on here still and you could roll uh minion crit minion crit damage these particular gloves are non-hybrid so they wouldn't be able to do that but i just wanted to show these for the clouds and rain benefit that way you could get a, a pair of gloves that are full minion stats and that'd be the maximum damage for you and the reason why you want to go some crit damage on here is so that you could re-roll the crit damage into even more minion amp that way you could get minion amp and these on on a pair of gloves Probably the strongest would be this, but it's going to be a lot easier just to roll your water your water gloves. You only have to get the one on here, and the, everything else is easy. When going for a crit build, though, make sure that you do the damage amp, cast speed, and you're trying to go for crit rate and crit damage. So you're not going to really have any resist. But once again, that's why I did make a persistence build, just to show people, hey, if you want to have all of your resist a lot early on in the game, persistence is a little bit easier. Last but not least, last big damage is going to be from your boots. So in your boots here, minion movement speed. Seems like a stat that some people might not want. Don't forget, when you go to the, the crafting bench, you're able to change it to minion elemental penetration, which was big for this build. But when I go javelin abysslings, I can change that into minion crit rate, which is even bigger. So that's gonna be the way we gear. If anybody wonders about how the charm works, uh, here's the charms I'm currently using. And a lot of charms that we were able to make all happened while we were trying to make a tier 7 um, star there. And here's the tier 7 star we made. And to make a star like this, I went in with three legendary Hamal charms and three legendary Sephdar charms. Mainly consisting of crit rate and attack speed, and we got attack speed and we got crit rate, so pretty lucky on this. Last thing to do with this is um, the reason why we went with Hamals and Sephdars is so we could get the 80% Hamals and the 140% Sephdar. After making this, I've realized that it's going to be based off of the charms you have on the outer side here. So, if you have a lot of Sephdar tier 8s, or a lot of Hamal tier 8s already, you do not need to make a split that's so heavy like this. You could actually go with a triple and go heavy on Sephdar, just to make sure you always have the Sephdar bonus. A few Hamal, and if you could do a few Castor, and I think it'd be a lot easier if you did that to hit the 80-80 cast, Castor Hamal and the 140 Sephdar. That's going to give you all the effects. So you get... HP amplification like I have here and you can get the elemental damage taken decrease or if you're going for um, build which I think would be a little bit stronger barrier amplification or you could even go with Leo this is only if you're going dodge and that's if you're going for an extreme tank all right hopefully that helps people that's gonna be how to do elemental persistence minions uh, we're going to be switching over to crit here shortly. I'll even show off one of the charms we have for crit. So here's one of the... Oh, right here. Here's one of the really big charms we're going to switch to. So here shortly, uh, I have a whole set that we're switching over to, and we're going to try out crit and uh, see how that goes for Javelin Abysslings and also how it goes for our uh, Fire Orb and our Poison.